you give a hand clap of praise to the Lord? The song says, born into sin, that I might live again. He was born into sin, that I might live again. Amen. The holy, the blameless, the spotless, the pure lamb of God, the son of God, God by himself, born into this filthy world, born into this filthy flesh. Why? So I might live again, live in the way God always intended, holy, blameless, with him full access. Ooh, why you love me so? I shall never know. I shall never be able to fully comprehend God. Why you love me with this unfailable Love. Many times as each of us has gone left and God sure enough told you to go right. As a matter of fact, you even said, okay, God, I'll go right. Then squirrel. And you went left. Yet God did not withhold his love. God, why you love us so? Why you love us? We can't fully comprehend this love of God that is so vast. But how many are thankful for the precious Lamb of God? Who loves you? Amen. Oh, my. It's a place to rejoice when you're talking about the pure, the perfect love of God. Amen. I'm going to try not to blow out this mic. We are uh, down many of our texts, as you already know, because the word of God was already read in your hearing. I'm going to lift up my focal verse and the focal verse is coming from Ephesians 1 13 B. Through 14. Again, Ephesians 1 13b to 14. So, what is 13b? That's the second portion. If you see a semicolon or a period or a major break in the verse, then we can say that that is B or C, etc. Okay? So, let me read the word of God. In, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until. The redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. I'm going to read that one more time because if y'all like me, that was a lot. I want you to let this resonate in your spirit. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father, that we love and who loves us. Lord, we know that you're already here and we're here to worship you and to hear what you have to speak to us. I'm asking that you use me for your glory, that you anoint me on fresh for your glory, that I decrease, that you increase within me, spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on these lips and fall fresh on the ears of those who have drawn up to the table to be fed of your word, which is their spiritual food, to strengthen them, to equip them, Lord God, that they might be better witnesses and understand better who they are in you. This is my prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen to God be the glory. You know that we are on a journey through the book of Ephesians. Amen. And so, again, I'll always say you need to come to Bible study, which is what? Every Wednesday at noon here in the house of God, where we have a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. Or Bible study Wednesday evening. Amen. At 7 p.m. on Zoom. Amen. Or Sunday school where we make the Bible come alive with videos and other media presentations to help us better understand the word of God. Okay, and that is every Sunday at 9.45 a.m. Come on in, Sister Leslie. 9.45 a.m. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, I thought I had a note. And that is here in this in, in my office. Amen, somebody. And it's also available to you on Zoom. Amen, somebody. 
We're not seeing the amount of people that we ought to see in there. Why? It's not like I'm trying to make you do something that you don't. Well, maybe I am trying to make you do something you don't want to do. But it's not because we just want people. It's because the word is alive and living. The word is your help. The word is your inheritance. You've got to know the word so that you're better able to stand in this fallen world knowing who you are. Amen. Now, when I'm at home and there's tools, you know, they say, get this tool, get that tool. If you don't know what the tools are because you never ever bothered to read the package, they came in all the instructions and you don't know nothing. You might have everything you need, but you don't know how to utilize it. Same with the word. You already have what God said you have. But if you don't know what God said you had or how to acquire it or how to appropriate it, then it's just like a drawer full of stuff. That you'll never use. It's like having a bank account with a million dollars in it. But you don't know that it's in your name. We need to know the word. So that we can live on purpose for a purpose. Amen. So in the word in Ephesians 4, first chapter verses 1 to 14. 3 to 14 is the one of the longest sentence in the Bible. It's one thought. It's one thought. It's one thought. What is the thought? The thought is the spiritual blessings that you have in Christ. It's knowing who you are in Christ that will better equip you to stand in this fallen world, better equip you to stand against the lies of the enemy, better equip you to let the light of God that he already placed in you shine. So what are the blessings that we have? Well, we understand from the weeks before that we are, are blessed. And again, blessing, we have to be very, very clear. Because when we think of blessing, you know, every time we get a check out of nowhere, we bless. Right? Every time something moves in our favor, we bless. We have to understand that being blessed does not mean that you'll never have a rainy day, that you'll never have a flat tire, that you'll never have a problem, that your children will never try to go left when you ask them repeatedly by force to go right. It doesn't mean that. It just means that God has given you everything you have need of to remain standing in the storm and come out of it better. Come out of it victorious. But if you don't know who you are and the tools in your toolbox and the blessings you've already been blessed with, then when the rain comes, you're the first one falling out, having a fit, losing your mind. The devil is a liar because we are overcomers. So how are we blessed? Well, think about it. We're blessed because we're chosen. God said before the foundation of the world, before he put the whole plan into motion and said, let there be light and separate the lesser light from the greater light. Before he created Adam and Eve, he had a plan and he chose you. He chose whosoever would believe in him. He'd make a way out of no way. And now understanding That before he did anything else for you to occupy the land, he made a plan and a way of escape for you or to make you feel confident in your salvation. He knew what he was getting because he saw you before you were you. We are blessed because we're adopted. He chose you so that you can be adopted into his family. That you can be a king's kid with has all the rights that any child of any family would have. You have an expectation. You have a right to expect that God, who is your father, will provide for you. You have a right to expect that the God who is your father will protect you. You have the right to expect that the God who is your father loves you and will be there for you. And then he accepted you. He didn't adopt you to be like, you know, I just want to do a good deed. He adopted you. He said, you are blessed and highly favored. You are mine. He saw the best in you. Called you to be his and accepted you. Blessed and highly favored. Lord, have mercy. The saints of God. More than anyone else has a right 
to walk through any issue going on with your head held high because you are blessed and highly favored from the God who created everything. But there was still an issue. He chose you, but you had to choose him back. Because once Adam and Eve messed up, sin entered the world. It entered our bloodline. And so we're all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And no matter how good you try to be, you'll never be good enough for God. But yet and still, he chose you. He made a plan. And that plan was Jesus. And it's by the Lamb of God who was born in this sin sick world came to redeem you to literally literally buy you back because you were on the slave block of sin where the enemy who is the prince of this world had authority to mess with you because you didn't yet come under the covenant of his protection until you chose Jesus who redeemed you and bought you back And there's only one way he was able to do this, and that was through the blood. So he went to Calvary, and he took your penalty on his own body. And by his blood, you have been redeemed. You have been justified. Now you are a child of God. Now you are a co-heir with Christ. Now your position in this world is in Christ. Now you are in heavenly places, a citizen of heaven. Everywhere your feet tread is the kingdom of God that you have access to. When he says, what have you to fear or what have you to dread? Because you have heavenly hosts that are here to protect, watch over, and minister on to you and so because you have been redeemed by the blood help me Holy Spirit you are forgiven okay thank you I don't even know which one is you are forgiven because of the blood that was shed on Calvary you're forgiven for all sins past present and future once you receive Jesus the sacrifice you are forgiven And so now we're going to what are the blessings of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. And so God gave me this illustration. Because for too long, we all have been pushed, have been taken advantage of by the enemy. Because we don't constantly remember our position in Christ or understand what that means so we can actualize who we are. First, understand that although you're in the physical world, we're spiritual beings. And what happens in the physical world is governed by the spiritual world. And you've got access to the spiritual world to call those things that be not. But you have to know who you are and what things to call. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. So let me do my little demonstration from the Lord. He literally just gave this to me. I was like, oh, Jesus, I love it. So this is you. Okay. This is you. Oh, if somebody could move that a little closer, I want them just to be able to see um, on Zoom. Now, you all might not be able to read everything. That's okay. You'll still get the idea. This is you, by yourself, walking around, doing life your way, right? But Jesus came and died for you. This is you before you accepted him, before you heard about him, before you knew about him, just doing whatever you're going to do based on your own mind. And the people did what was right in their own sight. That always gets us into trouble. In this state, you cannot go before a holy God. Because you're sinful. In this state, you don't have access to heaven because you've got spots and you've got blemishes. In this state, you don't have access to the kingdom. You're not a child of God. 
you're just someone created in the image of God, but forsaking the creator. But then you heard about Jesus and you said, come into my heart, be Lord of my life. You heard about Jesus who died. This is Christ. You see the blood? When you receive Jesus, now you are in Christ. Do you see that? You are in Christ. You are covered with the blood. When God sees you, he sees the blood. Because you're constantly covered with it. You're constantly cleansed of your sins, past, present, or future. You are in Christ. When you're in Christ, you become a child of God, which means you are now a co-heir of Christ. First of all, what does it mean? To, what, what promises has God made you because you're in him? This is going to be a talk back sermon, by the way. I didn't tell you all before. What promises, what inheritance, what do you have because you're in Christ? You have salvation, amen. These are too many things, so I can't. You have salvation. We're going to put delivered, delivered from sin, delivered from the bondage of sin. You have that now because you're in Christ, and that's what Christ has. What else do you have? Favor. favor. Where's my Favor. Somewhere in here. Let's keep on coming. Keep on coming. I gotta. I might not have printed. You got favor. You're forgiven, right? You're forgiven. What else? Come on. Once you're in Christ, you're a what? I sure do. I sure do need Vanna White. Come on. Come on, Vanna. You are a new creation. What else are you? This is just because you accepted Him. Favored. This is just because you accepted Him. What else? Peace. Okay? Peace. Once you accepted him, and now you're, well, I'm going to go back to once you accepted him, you were what? Chosen? You were adopted? You're a child of God? Okay? But now you're also a king's kid. And because of that, you're a co heir with Christ. So because of that, you have what Christ has access to, and that is peace. And what else? The first thing you receive when you come into him. Yeah, she, up, she got the cheat sheet up here. You're loved. Right? What else? Mercy. I don't need to yell. Y'all can hear me right now. Mercy. This is you. You're in Christ. What else? Strength. Yes. I'm going to make some strength up in here. Strength. What else? See, this is what I mean by y'all have to know. You'll have to know. What else do you have? Because you're in Christ. You have protection. It's up here. Protected. What else? Love. That was already. What else? I see y'all are going to have to keep re rewinding this one because y'all not. We have to know who we are. Grace. What else? Huh? Guidance. Yes. What else? She be coming up with the ones. It's in here. But guidance. No. What else? You have. Mm -mm. Where's the Holy Spirit? You have the Holy Spirit who will guide you when you're in Christ. What else? Joy. What else? You got to know what are the prom. What has God said to you? What else are you? Because you're in Christ. Everything Christ has, you are literally in Him. So what He has, you have. What else? Encouragement, what else? You're an overcomer, what else? See, you see what I'm talking about? This is what I'm talking about. We got to know who we, what else? If y'all are online, put it in the chat, because I'm going to be looking at that chat later on, and I'm going to see. So y'all just type away. I wish I had it where I could read your answers out loud, but I'm going to look at them later. What else do you have? Because power, you got power. 
spiritual Holy Ghost power. Because it's the power of God that worketh in you because you are in Christ. What else do you have? Huh? Kindness. Yes, because of the fruit of the Spirit. I didn't write all the fruit out because it's one fruit. What else? Oh, thank you. You have authority. You have authority because we are spiritual beings living in a natural world which is governed by the spirit realm. So the enemy who is the prince of this world who is trying to dabble and mess up everything, you've got authority over him because Jesus has authority and he's given you his authority because you're in him. What else? Discernment. I didn't write that one out, but yes, discernment. Well, uh, uh. spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts he gave you. So you have discernment. What else? Strength was said. This is why the devil keeps knocking us around, because we got to know who we are. I'm very serious. We got to know who we are. What else do you have? Mercy, yes. I think we said that one already and I put it in here. What else? Healing. Sister Pam. Amen. We got healing. We're healed. Hallelujah. What else? Yes, grace was said. What else? Hallelujah. Yes. We have access to God and we have the promises of God. So our prayers are answered by God. What else? Miracles. Yes. Signs and wonders. That's from the spiritual gifts. What else? Forgiveness is in here. Yes. And we're blessed. We're blessed. We have the ability Amen. To remain standing even through the adversities of life with a guarantee that we're going to come out better on the other side and that God walks with us. What else? We're justified. Hallelujah. We're equipped for every good work and every mission God asks you to do. He will equip you for it because you're covered in the blood. You sit in heavenly places. You're in Jesus and the Holy Spirit is in you. It's a double blessing, an inside and an outside covering. What else? Hallelujah. You are victorious. I don't care what it looks like. You are in the undefeated champion of the world who went to hell and took the keys of death and the grave for you. You are victorious. Don't let your situation fool you. What else? You are never alone. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. And you are in Jesus, covered in the blood. You are never alone. You are never alone. What else? You have access to God. Access to the throne room. Access. What else? I see y'all tapped out, huh? You're a citizen of heaven. Your feet might be planted in what we call earth, but you are a citizen of heaven. That means your situation has to come into agreement with what's going on in heaven. And when it doesn't, you have access and authority and power to call it according to his will into being. Because you've got creative power in the tongue. God said, let there be light. And it was when you come into agreement with the word of God. Because you're a citizen of heaven. Y'all don't like this one, but the fruit of the spirit, you got self-control. You can stop yourself from having a pity party because you remember who you are in Christ. You are cared for. You are holy. You are have eternal life. 
You have eternal life. It's not a maybe, could be, let's wait and see. It's a done deal. You are a light. You are a light because the light lives in you and you're covered in the light. We got to know that because you might walk down some scary blocks or places, but you are the light. Dare anything to try to put out that light because they're ministering angels assigned to you. And when you walk by the word of God, I'm not saying be perfect, but you know who you are than anything. Remember, we're in the natural world that's governed by the spiritual world. So anything that tries to jump out in the natural to say boo is governed by a principality in the spirit realm of which you already have authority over and to which your ministering angels will come to fight that battle on your behalf. You are his temple. You are his body. And there's so many more things that you are that you have in Christ. Now, guess what? Our verse today says that now the Holy Spirit who comes in you when you receive Jesus, he seals you until the day of redemption. To be sealed means you can't lose none of what you got in the blood. I don't care what the devil tells you. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what situations tell you. I'm still favored. I'm still blessed. I still got authority. I still got power. I'm still victorious. I'm still an overcomer. I still got everything God said belongs to me. That seal that they're talking about, you know how they used to... um. I'm going to just go with branding uh, cattle because it's theirs. It belongs to them. So the Holy Spirit seal is also the mark of the Holy Spirit within you that tells the world, the spiritual world, that you belong to God, that you are sealed. It's also the guarantee that says what God started in you. This is the down payment. For your future inheritance and glory when the fullness of all things will be revealed to you and you stand in your glorified body. This is God's seal and guarantee that the good work I started in you, I will complete it. You can't forfeit the contract. It's a done deal and it's sealed. The problem is we don't know it. So we walk around this world when the devil says something to us and we believe him or we quake in a corner or we give up or we go our own way because we don't want to wait on God because now we feel like maybe because sometimes I did go left that I forfeited the blessings that I have in Christ. But you can't forfeit what God has sealed With the promise of the Holy Spirit that is the guarantee even for you to remind you that you are a king's kid. Here's how the enemy gets. We got to stop talking to the devil in terms of trying to argue with him and debate him because that's what we do. In a court of law in the natural, as a defendant, there's three pleads you can make. You can plead guilty. You know what that means. You can plead not guilty and then you'll go to trial. You can plead no contest, which means that, you know, I'm not going to agree or disagree. And that ends up being the same as having pled just basically guilty. And even waiving a trial. So when the enemy comes to us and tells us, look what you did, you think God still loves you? We start to debate him and we'll say, well, yeah, God loves me or it wasn't that bad. Or I said, I I, 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 I asked God to forgive me or, you know, we start doing all these things. But there's a fourth plea that you plead when you are in Christ. You plead the blood. When the devil says, look what you did, I plead the blood. 
You can't come. The blood says I'm holy. The blood says I'm worthy. The blood says I'm a child of God. The blood says I'm victorious. The blood, the blood, the blood. You've got to know the power of the blood. That is over your life. The blood that never loses its power. Now, because you're sealed, covered in the blood, sometimes the enemy don't try to mess with you. He'll mess with your stuff. He'll mess with your children. He'll mess with your husband. He'll mess with your household. He'll mess with anything he can mess with to get you to be distracted, to forget that I'm already blessed and everything connected to me is blessed. You got to know not to go with the emotional roller coaster of what your eyes see, but you got to know that you've got a, 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 a plea you can make in any courtroom, and it's to plead the blood. There's that song, I plead, I plead the blood. So you can't have my family. I plead the blood. You can't have my child. Why? Because the promises of God are for me. And even though they have to make their election sure, God says the fruit of my room would be blessed. God said that he would bestow goodness to a thousand generations of those that love me. So devil, get your hands on. I plead the blood. You might want to come and touch my finances to make it me think I'm going to lose my mind. But God's word says that he will supply my needs according to his riches and glory. So for that case, when you're trying to hold my money hostage, I plead the blood. When you're sick in your body. Yeah, the doctor said this, the doctor said that, but guess what? I plead the blood. When my household is full of strife and it looks like things are going awry, I don't have to stand there and lock myself in the one room because every other room is full of argument. I go through my house and I plead the blood because God says I have peace. God says I have joy. God says there's reconciliation. God says I'm more than a conqueror. When I have trouble on my job, I don't care what he, she, thee, or anybody else is saying. You got to know. You stand up and plead the blood. Devil, you can have what belongs to me. I take the authority that is mine because I'm in Christ and I plead the blood. How many of us plead the blood? How many of us know what it means? I'm saying, devil, you thought you could touch this, but everything connected to me, I plead the blood. I might be living in the worst neighborhood where crime and everything else is running rampant, but I'm a child of God and everywhere my feet tread is holy ground. So all I need to do is walk and say, I plead the blood. And guess what? The principalities have to bow, not to me, but to the living God and the power of the angels that come to fight on my behalf because I stood in my authority. I stood in my new identity and I know the power of the blood. We've got to understand. Now that doesn't mean that this is a magic, a magic of saying, abracadabra. But it means that what is not of God, what is nonsense solely from the enemy, has to move. And what doesn't, God has a purpose in the press. So I put my ears to the master's ears to see how to maneuver in this. But I plead the blood. Because unnecessary trauma, and it might not happen overnight. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over my household, my, the family that's near me, the family that's not so close to me, the family that come from my wound. I plead the blood over my anxiety. I plead the blood over my sanity. I plead the blood over my body. I plead the blood over family. I plead the blood over family relationships. I plead the blood throughout my house. I plead the blood on my car to get me here and there with God watching over me. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. You've got to know who you are. This person, when they, when, when you stood Christ, you didn't become perfect. I know who you are. 
We ought to choose to want to follow after him. Get better day by day. But in the process, when I said yes, he sealed me. He gifted me. He blessed me. He sanctified me. He justified me. He forgave me. He gave me authority over every lie of the enemy. He gave me power to call those things that be not as though they are. He assigned ministering angels to come and see about me. He said his promises for me are yes and amen and nothing I can do about it because I'm saved and I'm sealed until I see him in the sweet by and by. And I don't need to fret about that because I've got the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that God will do just what he said he would do in my life how many things would shift when the children of God walked in their identity it's not being arrogant it's just knowing the real deal we are blessed and highly favored devil you are a liar and I plead the blood you've stolen too long I know what belongs to me. Take your hands off of the things God's assigned to me. And I plead the blood. You can't say nothing. I plead the blood. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Just be ever mindful. You're not out here on your own. The Holy Spirit is in you. And your position is in Christ. Covered in the blood always, cleansing you and all of the blessings that God has for you. They are for you. Now you just need to command your mouth to speak his word over your life. And when the enemy tries to jump up, I don't need to talk to you. I just plead the blood. Poof, be gone. I plead the blood. Amen. Now, if this looks like it's all us, but I still have to say if there's one, you never made that election sure. See, the reason why we make we, we, we're not saved by what we do, but there should be a change because when you receive the blood, you know what you said? You said, Lord, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Right. If he's Lord, if he's king, then you want to obey him. And so we, we do what we can and let God do all the rest. Amen. But because I received him, it's a done deal. Now, if there's one and you never made your election sure, tomorrow is not promised anybody. If you're unsure, if you did, then I offer you Jesus today. And I'm going to ask you to stand where you are. And if you're on Zoom, y'all could come. If you're on Zoom and you haven't made that election sure, I'm going to ask you to put your name in the chat. Put it in the private chat. Send it just to Bethel if you want so that I can follow up with you and pray with you. Amen. Because we want to know that we are sealed, that we're covered who we are. But the first step is to say yes to the great gift that God's already bestowed on us. Amen. And if there's one and you don't have a church home, because the Bible says forsake not the assembling of the saints together in one place, a place where you can be nurtured by other believers, prayed for and be in community as we all walk together in the Lord. We offer Bethel to talk it to you. And if there's one, I'm going to ask that you please stand. And if you're online, I'm going to ask you to put your name in the chat. Amen. And if all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray as we close out. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great love that we can't even, why you love us so much. You've done so much. You still do so much for us. Why? We can't understand, but we say thank you. Now, Lord God, you didn't bless us for us to remain sitting in the same position you found us in. But we are now new creatures in Christ. Help us, Lord God, to arise and live lives from that position of blessedness, authority, king's kids, and the light of this dark and dying world. Oh, help us, Lord, not a uh, 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 run away, but stand our ground. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, Plead the blood 
and watch you do the rest. Heavenly Father, now unto you who's able to keep us from falling because you've already sealed us with the guarantee of your Holy Spirit until the day of full redemption where we shall live with you eternally in the new heaven. Lord God, to be you and only you, all glory, all honor, dominion and power now and forevermore. And let the children of God say amen as we sing. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let the church say amen. Thank you, God. God has spoken. Yes, Lord. So let the church say amen. Hallelujah, God. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, go walk in the authority. Go take the peace of God with you. And the proper response for God that's done this much to us is to live lives of worship. Amen? Amen. We have one more. We have an announcement. Amen. 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 Give this lady a hand clap for for that teaching lesson this morning. If you weren't blessed by that, you need to go back and rewatch it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. That was a lesson this morning. We are so blessed with a preaching and a teaching pastor.